Today we're going to be doing some interior design using flowers. I'm going to show you how to make a beautiful orchid flower arrangement. I'm going to show you a few easy steps of how you can make it and you'll be making flower arrangements like a pro. The first thing that you're going to want to do is find an inspiration piece. It could be in a magazine, it could be online, it could be inspired by your favorite flower or perhaps the color of your flower that fits in with your existing decor. My inspiration piece was from Hor Chow and it was an orchid arrangement. However, it was $950 and I was not going to spend $950 on arrangement, so I thought I'd make it myself for a fraction of the cost. Inspiration is everywhere, so choose an arrangement that fits your specific taste and style. There are so many different styles of arrangements that you can choose from. In my home, I have tall, symmetrical flower arrangements, I have wide centerpieces, and in my dining room, I have wall sconces that I put a flower arrangement inside of. You can also use different things like feathers or glass reflective surfaces. I have glass balls that really take an ordinary arrangement and elevate it into something unique and special. I love the elegant feel of orchids. I purchased mine at Michael's and used my 30% off coupon. The flat green leaves were a perfect size and shape and the succulents will add extra interest and detail to my arrangement. The next thing you're gonna need to do is get some kind of a container. You can get a vase or a box. I found this at TJ Maxx. It's very similar to the inspiration piece and it was only $14.99. So after you found your container, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna fill it up with floral foam to form a base on the bottom of our container and then we'll secure it together with floral pins. A solid or opaque colored container will hide the floral foam and any other mechanics of your arrangement. I used a knife to cut my floral foam to the right size so they'd fit together like a puzzle, and I would have one solid base. Then I secured them together with floral pins so the foam wouldn't shift or move when I added the flowers. On top of our floral foam, we're gonna add some floral moss. I got this at the Dollar Tree, and what we're gonna do is put it on top of the floral foam, and we're gonna spread it out evenly until it's all nice and covered. Break up the block of moss and spread it out evenly until all of the floral foam is hidden. This floral moss is also really great for gaps in your foam because you can just press it inside and will make your base that much more secure. Pack the moss firmly into any nooks and crannies. This will give your base added stability. Once your moss is in place, tack it down with more floral pins placed randomly throughout your arrangement. The pins will help keep the moss in place. Now it's time to add our flowers. There is such a huge variety of flowers that you could choose from. You could add pastel colors for spring. You could add vibrant colors for the summer. You could add leaves and pine cones and berries for the fall and the winter. I opted to go with this white orchid because it's such a beautiful and elegant flower and it will fit into my existing decor and I can use it all year long. As a rule, your tallest flowers or branches should be one and a half times the height of your container or vase. So the taller the flower, the taller the container. What you're gonna wanna do is place your large floral stems in first. I have five orchid stems, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place them in my arrangement first and kind of get a rough estimate of where I want them, and then I can adjust the size and the shape that I want them to be. An odd numbered arrangement looks more natural and less forced than an even numbered collection. Flowers are beautiful, but you can always find ways to improve their appearance. Consider removing excess leaves or small buds that detract from the beauty of a single flower. There is no need to rush while you're arranging. This is the fun part. If you're not getting the look you want, play with the size and placement of your stems. Bend and twist the flowers until you get the look you want. Just remember to let the beauty of the flowers guide you. Now that our flowers are in place, we're going to add some bamboo right along the side of it. I already have this bamboo, so this isn't going to cost me anything. And then I got this raffia at the Dollar Tree. What I'm going to do with the raffia is I'm going to tie it around the bamboo and around the floral stem so that they're tied tightly together. I placed the bamboo about one half inch away from each of the orchid stems and then tied them together with a simple knot. The bamboo will give your orchid stem added strength so it won't bend or topple over. When you're done tying your knot, simply snip off any excess raffia. Now it's time to add our leaves and our succulents to the base of our arrangement. 
These leaves are from Michaels and I'm just gonna trim these right off so I'll have some stems. And then also, on these succulents from the Dollar Tree, all I need to do is just pop these right out of this little pot and I can place them in my arrangement. I cut my stems with scissors, but you could also use wire cutters. And then I easily pulled my succulents out of the pot. We're gonna place our leaves in our container in areas that are found naturally on an orchid plant. And then if there's any gaps or spaces in between the leaves, that's where we're gonna add our succulents. I poked my leafy stems at the base of each orchid, but made sure they weren't too clumped together. By giving the orchids space and room to breathe, it allows each stem and leaf to stand out on its own and creates a beautiful sense of depth and volume that is light and airy. And finally, adding the succulents finishes off our arrangement. I am so happy with the completed look. This project was easy to do and will be a timeless piece of home decor. The arrangement is an almost identical match to my inspiration piece, but came in at a much more reasonable price. After adding up all of the costs of the materials, including the flowers, the foam, the succulents, the leaves, and the container, it was around $50, which is $900 less than my inspiration piece. And considering the size and scale of this arrangement, that is a great deal. Decorate your home with a beautiful floral arrangement. Create a custom one-of-a-kind piece to suit your distinctive style and taste. My first project is a lemon and fresh magnolia centerpiece. I'm gonna start off with two containers. You're gonna need two different sizes. The first one needs to be glass. That way, when you put the lemons inside, you'll be able to see through the glass and see the lemon slices. And then your second container needs to be able to fit inside of your larger container and still have a gap in between. Now, I have about a half an inch gap between my large container and my smaller center container, which is the perfect space so that I can place in my lemons. Now I have cut my lemons to about a quarter inch slice. Dependent on the size of your containers, you could do thicker or thinner, but what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that they can fit in nicely and still be tight enough that they will be able to stand up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna set my lemon slices right inside of my container. It's gonna be like, like playing Connect Four, only everybody's a winner. <laughs> so I'm gonna make my first layer down um, at the beginning at the base, just put my lemons inside and you want them to be tight, like right next to each other. So just kind of jam them in there. Get them as close as you can to each other without overlapping. So once your first lemons are down, what you're gonna wanna do is on your next layer, you're gonna wanna put it right in between, right in that dip. So it's kind of like you're stacking bricks. So just keep continuing to put those lemons in stacking those lemons up until your entire container is filled with the lemon slices. Okay, now all of my lemon slices are stacked. I'm gonna turn it around for you so you can see how nicely they look. I ended up using three lemons, and again, that will vary dependent on how large or small your container is on how many lemons you're gonna need. So now I'm going to add some water to my large, mason jar in the center and then in the center of this I'm going to use some magnolia leaves and flowers. I have a magnolia tree in my yard and right now they are blooming. They are so beautiful and so I knew that this was going to be a perfect choice for my centerpiece. I have seen some arrangements with hydrangeas in there with a bunch of different varying colors that look so pretty as well. So just pick a flower that fits in with your decor and with your style. So I'm choosing to put them inside. I'm just gonna add them in. Oh, they smell so lovely, so beautiful. And because they have leaves that are kind of hanging down, it blocks the front portion of the lip of my container so you can't really see that there's another container inside and it's just gonna look so beautiful. 
This arrangement was so easy to make and so affordable. The only thing that I had to purchase were the lemons. I had everything else and it's going to fit in perfectly with my home decor or be a showstopper as a centerpiece. Today I am surrounded by three spring and Easter flower arrangements. I'm going to show you how to make these and then I'm going to show you how to display them as a centerpiece. The first centerpiece that I'm going to be doing today is this beautiful flower arrangement. It's cream and it's got some beautiful spring speckled eggs. I love using interesting containers for my flower arrangements. Especially for seasonal decor, I don't want to go out and buy a new vase or container. I just don't want to spend the money. So I rummaged through my kitchen cabinets and I came across this beautiful soup tureen that I got at Dillard's a few years ago. I don't use it very often and I knew it would be the right size and the right color for this particular flower arrangement. Now you can get really creative with your containers. Last week I used a trifle bowl for a carrot flower arrangement. You can use a punch bowl or a water pitcher. Just look through your cabinets and see what you have because you might find a beautiful container. Now I filled the inside of my soup tureen with some floral foam and I tacked it together with some floral pins. And then I got some Dollar Tree moss and I spread that over the top of the foam and then I tacked it down with some more of those floral pins. Now most craft places have floral pins, however if you can't find some you can always use hot glue and that would work too. The cream color on the soup tureen was my inspiration to pick out my cream colored flowers. All of the flowers on this particular arrangement are either from Michaels or from Hobby Lobby. So what I did was I got the prominent flower that I wanted to see the very most and I placed it right into the center. And then I added the tall flowers towards the back in the center. And then I placed the shorter flowers to the sides and in the front until it formed a dome shape. Now I like to place my flowers in first because then I can get them all situated. And then afterwards I got my greenery, which again was from Michaels and Hobby Lobby and I placed it in between the flowers. Now, if we stopped at this point, this would be a beautiful flower arrangement for any season or party. However, we are going to theme this spring and Easter. So I'm going to add in some egg picks that I got at Michael's. The color on them is fantastic. It goes really well with the cream and I love the little speckles on them. So I'll just spread those throughout the arrangement. The final piece is this cream and gold and burlap ribbon. I wanted to put a cute little bow on the side, so I cut each piece into a foot long segment. I made one loop in each of the ribbons and I got a piece of floral wire and I wrapped it around the ribbons. And then I got another floral pin and I put it right through the center of my bow and then I attached it right onto the floral foam on my centerpiece. To display this arrangement as a centerpiece, I'm going to add it to a large silver tray. I'm going to put some of those yarn carrots that we made last week around it on, on top of the tray to add that extra little bit of spring and Easter. This cabbage flower arrangement is probably one of my favorite arrangements that I have ever done. I didn't even have to look for a container. All I had to do was decide if I wanted a purple cabbage or a green cabbage. For this spring flower arrangement, I needed one head of cabbage, various spring flowers, one cup, some rubber bands, and asparagus. The first thing that I did was I evened off the bottom of the cabbage. I did not want my cabbage to go rolling away with my flowers inside. So I got a knife and I trimmed the bottom of the cabbage so it was nice and flat and even. And then I chose a glass that would fit inside my cabbage. I traced out the top part of the glass right onto the top of the cabbage with a Sharpie. And then I took a knife and began to cut along the circular tracing. I made fairly deep cuts into the cabbage because I'm going to need a lot of space for my cup. I began peeling away the cabbage layers and then I took a spoon and began to hollow it out. 
Now, let me tell you, I felt like it was Halloween and I was carving a pumpkin. It is so dense and thick at the core that I had cabbage just flying everywhere. I found some in my hair. So be prepared to roll up your sleeves and get to work when you're hollowing out your cabbage. Once I was finished coring out my cabbage, I put my cup inside. I just placed it in and I pressed it down so it was nice and secure. And then it was time to add my flowers. Now, these flowers are from my yard. I know you guys know that I live in Florida and I'm so lucky that I have flowers that bloom all year long so I can really take advantage of them. However, if you don't have flowers that you can just get from your yard, you can just go to your grocery store and pick some up there. They're not that expensive, especially because you'll only need a handful of them. So what I did with my flowers was I put them into bunches and then I got some rubber bands and I rubber band these stems together. I made about three or four different bunches. Doing it this way makes it really easy to put them in your cup for your flower arrangement because they're already just the way you want them to be. The colors are already where they need to be. The heights are already where they need to be. And then I did the same thing with my asparagus. I put three asparagus in each bunch and then I rubber band them together. And then I placed my flowers inside of the cup. First I added some water to the cup and then I placed in my flowers. I just put them in so they were nice and even and then I went back through and I put the asparagus, just tucked it inside of the flowers so it added extra height and I think it was fun and unique to add the asparagus because how many times do you see a flower arrangement with asparagus in it? Not very often. So it was a fun way to add a little extra bit of spring to this arrangement. One thing about this cabbage flower arrangement was that I made this several hours earlier and then it's just been sitting in the fridge. So if you're making this for a party, just know that you can make it earlier on the day and then put it in the fridge and then pop it out and it's still gonna look really great. Now, how pretty is this arrangement? I just love the way it came out and it was so easy to make. I can picture this on a big Easter buffet table right next to the fruit and veggies. Now, the way that I'm going to display this as a centerpiece is I'm going to put it on this glass plate and then I'm also going to add some pearlescent ceramic bunnies. The final spring centerpiece is this beautiful bird's nest flower arrangement. Now the container that I got is from the Dollar Tree and it is simply a basket liner. I'm going to fill it up with some floral foam and then I'm going to add some shredded paper to the top of the foam and then I'm going to tack it all together with some floral pins. Again, if you don't have floral pins, you can just hot glue everything together. I wanted some bright white flowers for this flower arrangement. I wanted them to pop against the brown container and the wreath that was down below. Now all of my flowers and greenery are from the Dollar Tree. So what I did was I took my stems and I trimmed them into little segments. I had some hydrangeas and I kept a lot of the stems long and then I also trimmed some that were a little bit shorter. And then I began to add my flowers to my foam. I started in the back with my tallest flowers and then I worked my way forward and I added the flowers to the side and to the front that were a little bit shorter until I had a dome shape. Next I added in my greenery in between the flowers. When you add the greenery up against the white flowers, it really makes those flowers pop. So if there were any vacant spaces, I put some greenery in there. I wanted to add something bright and springy to this arrangement and I found these speckled eggs, these turquoise and blue speckled eggs at Ross. They were only $3.99 for a set of nine. So what I did was I got some wooden skewers and I poked them through the center of the egg. And the eggs were just styrofoam so the sticks went right in. And then I trimmed a few of the sticks so I could have a variation in height. And I think that the color on these is a great accent, but I wanted a little bit more color to it as well. So I decided to add a few turquoise and blue ribbons. So I got some ribbons and I cut them into some segments. I placed one ribbon on top of the other and then I tied it into a bow. And then I took that bow and I got some hot glue and I hot glued it right onto the stick 
So it had just that extra little bit of texture and brightness. Once my egg picks were finished, I placed them inside of my flower arrangement. And I love the extra pop of color that it brings and the extra little bit of spring. After I was finished, I took my container because it is a little more flimsy and I put it inside of this grapevine wreath that I got from Michaels. Now this wreath is gonna do double duty. It's going to keep my container in place. It's kind of flimsy and I don't want it to roll away. We don't want to run away centerpiece. But also it looks like a nest, so it's going to keep the theme of a bird's nest arrangement. To display this arrangement as a centerpiece, I'm placing it on my table, and then I'm going to add two of those Mod Podge bunnies that we made last week for an extra bit of color and springtime flair. I really hope you enjoyed these three spring and Easter centerpiece ideas. You could display them in the center of your kitchen table, on an island, on a shelf, or even on a foyer table, anywhere that you want to add an extra touch of spring. Now, the container that I'm using for my flower arrangement is from Home Goods, and it was originally $19.99, but I got a screaming deal on it. You can see it had been marked down a couple of times, and I picked it up for $4.50. And it's a blank slate, so it's gonna go with so many different seasons and pieces of decor. So I'm going to do a semi-permanent treatment to this container. What I did was I got a fishing net at the Dollar Tree, and I got some double-sided tape. Now I took this double-sided tape, and I put it along the length of my container and I did it all around the perimeter so I had strips of double-sided tape so I could then take my fishing net and begin to wrap it around. Now I started at the bottom and I took the net and I pressed it firmly onto the tape and then I just coiled it around the container. Every time I got to a piece of double-sided tape, I just pressed it firmly against the tape and it held it so nicely in place. The double-sided tape is a great option to use instead of a hot glue or other kinds of glue because at the end of the season, I can take this net off and use the space for another project or another piece of home decor. Once my container was covered in the netting, I got some floral foam and I pressed it inside and then I got some reindeer moss and I spread that over the entire surface of the top. I got some floral pins and I pressed that over the top of the moss to keep everything in place. I purchased my hydrangeas from the Dollar Tree. I got this pretty coastal blue hydrangea and kind of a pear colored hydrangea and they're going to be perfect for my beachy fill. So what I did with my hydrangeas was I wanted to have them kind of mimic the container just kind of low and round and so I got some tin snips and I trimmed down the stems. On the green ones, which I'm starting with first, I cut those down to about an eight inch stem and then I placed one bunch on the left hand side and one bunch on the right hand side and then I moved on to these pretty blue ones and I trimmed those as well. These were more like a 10 inch stem and then I put the hydrangeas in the front and in the back. So that way I have a lovely, as you can see, I kind of turn it and you get the pretty flowers all the way around. So after my hydrangeas were in place, I wanted to add some leaves. I got these stems of greenery at Michael's and it's just another bit of color that you could add to it in interest. So I just placed those in some vacant spots. And then the final piece was to add these shells. Look how cute those are. So what I did was I just got some wooden skewers and I cut them in half. And because my shells were curled, I just took that wooden skewer and I just pressed it right inside the little hole and it held it really snugly in place. I didn't add hot glue to mine. However, if you were concerned about the stability of it, you could add a little bit of hot glue to the end of your wooden skewer before you or put the stick inside the shell. And then I took my shells and I just put them in random spots around my arrangement to give it that final little bit of a summertime vibe. On 
top of my tablecloth, I'm adding these tall, elegant centerpieces that will add height to my tablescape. Now I added my base with my greenery first because I don't want this base to topple over onto my food or have some of these leaves possibly fall into my food. No one wants a leaf in their meat. And I chose a magnolia leaf because again, it was classic and neutral and it will pair wonderfully with my tablescape. And it's also really easy to switch this out for different seasons. You could add some fall leaves for the uh, harvest party you could add some poinsettias or pine cones for a Christmas party. You could even add some floating candles for a New Year's Eve party. So using a vase with greenery is a perfect way to add a little bit of brightness to your tablescape. Now instead of leaving this just plain, I wanted to embellish it a little bit. So I got some crystals and I tied some fishing line to them. And then I got a little boutonniere pin and I tied it out in the fishing line and I stuck the boutonniere pin through the fishing line and then straight into the stems that are on my magnolia leaves. When it comes to holiday entertaining, it's only natural to want to gather friends and family together and host an event that adds to the festive glow of the season. Include a wow tablescape filled with a variety of delicious hors d'oeuvres from a fruit tray to a cheese board. Now I love decorating with flower arrangements. They bring such a bright, cheerful feeling to a room. And one of the flowers that I love to work with the most are orchids. They are so classy and they fit in with so many different styles and tastes and seasons. The only drawback to orchids is that they can be really pricey. Take for instance, this arrangement that I found at Horcho on the website. It was $450 for two stems. That's gonna be a no for me. So I thought I would use it as an inspiration piece so I could make this orchid arrangement for $14, which is a much more reasonable price. Now I knew that the most difficult part of this arrangement was going to be finding a similar container to my inspiration piece. So I hit up my local thrift store and I found two separate pieces. The first piece is a candlestick. It is the perfect size and shape. It's really heavy and it's going to be a great base for my container. The best part is that it was only $2.99. And as I kept looking through the shelves, I found this lovely glass bowl that had an offset top that fit into my inspiration piece perfectly. It was $3.99 and I thought if I put this large bowl on top of my candlestick, it will make a perfect container that mimics the inspiration piece very nicely. Now I'm not going to glue my two pieces together because I want to have the option to use them separately later on and they're heavy enough that they'll stay together and I'm not going to move them around a lot so there won't be a lot of shifting. However, if you did find two pieces that you wanted to glue together, I would recommend using E6000. To replicate the foam that's in the bottom of my container, I'm using some foam that I already have. Now, if you have foam that's been previously used and has a couple of holes in it, don't toss it out, reuse it, it'll still work. That's what I'm doing here. I'm using some pieces that I previously used that had a few holes in it. That's not a big deal. My flowers will still stay in the foam really nicely. So I'm going to take a square of foam and add a second piece on top of it. And then I'm going to use some floral pins and I'm gonna put some floral pins on each side of my square piece of foam. And then I'm gonna take a sharp knife and carve the top piece of the foam into a dome shape that mimics the shape of the foam on my inspiration arrangement. Next, I'm going to place some moss on the surface of the foam. This moss is from the Dollar Tree. I already had it, so again, it's not gonna cost me any extra money. I spread the moss out on each side except for the bottom of the foam until it was completely covered. I secured the moss to the foam Again, using some floral pins. If you don't have floral pins, you could use hot glue and that would attach the moss to the foam as well. 
Because this foam was freestanding in my container, I was afraid that once I added the florals to it, that it would topple over or shift. So to combat that foreseeable problem, I added a dab of hot glue into the bottom of the container, and then I took my square of foam and I pressed it into the hot glue and held it there until it dried. Now, the thing about hot glue is that if I wanted to use this container later on for a different project, I could just peel back that hot glue and the container would be good as new. Now that our foam is in place, it's time to add our leaves and our florals. We'll start off with the leaves. These leaves are actually magnolia leaves, but they look just like orchid leaves to me. And I already had them, so I'll save myself some more money that way. So what I did was I got some snips and I trimmed off the top four leaves that were on the stem. And then I took those leaves and I poked them into the foam and then I styled the leaves around so they looked like my inspiration piece. Now it's time to add our beautiful orchid stems. Now I got these orchid stems at Michael's. They were $5.99 a piece. However, on the day that I went, all of the florals were 40% off. And on the day that I went, I had a coupon for an additional 20% off of my entire purchase. And so I'm gonna get my receipt here. It says that for both of my floral stems, I spent $7.19 which is a great deal because orchid stems can be really expensive. So I'm gonna round that down. Hope you guys are okay with that. We'll just say it was $7 for these two stems of orchids. So what I did with these orchids was I took them and I began to bend them. The first one down on the bottom, I bent it into an arch so it looked like the piece that was in my inspiration, the same beautiful arch. And then I placed it into the front side of my floral foam. And then for the taller stem in the back, I just arched the top part so it was nice and tall and just had a little arc at the top. And then I poked that into my floral foam in the back. Now I have to say it was really nice to have an inspiration piece to duplicate because I knew exactly where to put my floral stems. I knew exactly how to curve them. I knew the exact number of leaves that I needed. So if you have seen a flower arrangement that's way out of your price range, but you really want it, then just take it and use it as your inspiration piece. Or if you're a novice floral arranger and you really want to get started, mimicking a flower arrangement that you've seen that you really love is a great place to start. Now I knew that the trickiest part of this arrangement was going to be these sticks. My inspiration piece, the sticks were acrylic. I couldn't find anything like that, so I opted just to paint some wooden dowels white, and I think it looks fantastic. It's not a big deal to switch things out. So luckily, I had these wooden dowels at home. I just found them in my craft stash, and I got them out, and I decided that they needed to be painted. So I took them outside, and I poked them into some of this foam. This is gonna be great because it's gonna hold my wooden dowels upright. So when I spray paint them, I can get around the entire wooden dowel and it's not gonna rub against the, the ground or have any smudging. So if you have a piece of foam, this is a great way to get a even coat on your dowels. So I spray painted it with some chalk paint that I got at Walmart. I did a few coats and then I let it dry for about 20 minutes and then I took the sticks out of the foam turned them upside down so that the bare part was at the top and then I sprayed those so the entire sticks were white and then I let them dry completely which for me was overnight. Now I needed three separate pieces of wooden dowel. One for the back, one for the front and then one that went horizontally across the center. So I kind of eyeballed how I thought the lengths should be and then I clipped them with some clippers. And then I added the tall stick to the back next to my tall orchid stem and then placed the shorter piece in the front. Next, I took the second wooden dowel and held it in front of the arrangement until I got a length that was about right and then clipped it to size. To attach my dowels together, I'm using some thin white ribbon. Now I just took a segment of this ribbon, it was about three to four inches, and then I held it around the two pieces of the dowel, and then I tied the ribbon in a knot, 
and then wrapped the ribbon tightly around the two pieces of dowel. When I got to the end of the ribbon, I tied it into a knot to secure it together, and then I cut off the excess ribbon. Now I replicated this process down on the lower one. I took my segment of ribbon, I tied it around the dowel into a knot, wrapped it around a couple times, tied it in a knot to secure it when I was finished, and then snipped off the excess ribbon. Now, I can't believe how great this arrangement turned out. In my opinion, it looks really similar to the inspiration piece. I don't know, what do you think? Does it look like the inspiration piece to you? The best part about this arrangement was, of course, the price. By using a few thrifted items, some orchid stems that I got on sale, and some items that I found around the house, it only ended up costing me $14, which is a $436 savings, which I can definitely get behind. Now, if you've seen an arrangement that's out of your budget, go ahead and make it yourself and get the look for less. The first DIY that we're gonna do is this carrot flower arrangement. Now, I love flowers. They have such a beautiful way to brighten up a room and to bring a freshness to it. This container that I'm using, I got from Home Goods and it was on clearance for $8, so I totally scored there. And this is what else you're gonna to need to make this arrangement. First, I got some floral foam and I put it inside of my small container. And then I took that small container and I put it inside the larger container. Then I got my raffia and I tucked it inside the vacant space that was between my smaller container and my larger container. Now, this does double duty. The raffia will hold the carrots in place, but it will also hide the smaller container inside so you don't see it and you don't see the floral foam either. Next, I took my carrots and I pushed them inside the raffia. Now, I put the carrots in between the raffia and the glass front, the reason why I do that is because you want to be able to see, look how pretty all those cute little carrots are. You want to be able to see the carrots and you don't want the raffia to be in the way. So make sure that when you put the carrots in that you have it facing the glass with nothing blocking it. Once all of my carrots were evenly spaced throughout the entire perimeter of the container, it was time to add the flowers. Now all of my flowers are from the Dollar Tree and the greenery is from Michael's. So I started off with my tallest flower first, which is my hyacinth. I placed it in the center, and then I added my tulips and my other white flowers around it to make a dome. Now down at the base, I took some flowers and I trimmed the ends off with some wire clippers so that they were shorter and they could be closer down by the, way, the base. Now, after I had all of my flowers situated, I added the greenery. Now, I love the way that this greenery looks. I specifically chose it because I wanted it to kind of be floppy and hang and billow over the container. And I, again, spaced them out basically at the bottom because I wanted that look of it hanging over. And I really like the way that the greenery ended up looking. I really like the way that these monochromatic flowers, the white flowers ended up looking. I think it really makes the carrots pop because after all they are the star. But if you wanted to choose a vibrant colored flower or a different kind of spring flower, that would work as well. Florals and greenery are a great way to bring in color and add in a fresh, vibrant feel. This succulent garden was such an easy thing to make. I just got a glass container, I filled it up with rocks, and then I got some mini milk bottles. And I love it because it has a gold stripe at the bottom, which really adds to the aesthetic that I'm going for. And then I got a few Dollar Tree succulents. I placed a few in between the rocks. I put one in each of the mini milk bottles, and I think it looks so great. Instead of adding candles, I'm going to treat these like a vase and add in some more succulents, which will tie my design together. My inspiration piece was from the Wayfair website. 
They had a beautiful French country arrangement that I really liked, so I thought that that would be a great place to start. However, this flower arrangement is $151, but because it is the holiday weekend, you get 25% off, which is $113. That's still too much for me to pay, so I thought I would make my own. Now, the flowers that I got are from Hobby Lobby. I got four of them. They are $7.99 a piece, but that was still too much to pay, so I waited until they were on sale. They were 40% off, which was a much better deal. While I was there, I also found a similar container, and it was on clearance. So the grand total for my beautiful arrangement is $20.35, which is a huge savings over the inspiration piece. The first thing that I'm gonna do is transform my clearance cardboard storage box into a beautiful French country container. So what I did was I got on my computer and I turned on my Photoshop and I tried to replicate the wording and the font exactly. Then I printed it out on some cream cardstock paper that matched the label on the inspiration label, the same color. Then I measured the height of the box and then traced out the exact measurements onto my cardstock. Then I cut it out, and to make sure that the lines were straight, I used my paper trimmer, and I needed to add some extra length to my label. So I cut out additional pieces, and then I taped them all together so that the label would be long enough to go around the entire perimeter of my container. Now it's time to attach my label to my storage container. And so I'm gonna use some Mod Podge and a sponge brush. Now, don't be afraid to use a lot of this Mod Podge. I took a bunch of it and I layered it onto my box. I used a thick amount and I painted it on the entire perimeter of the box. Then I placed my label directly over the top of the Mod Podge and made sure that it was centered and then I smoothed out the label onto the box. Then I took some more Mod Podge and I liberally added a lot more to the top of the label. And again, I did it around the entire perimeter. And don't worry about the cloudy color that it leaves because as it dries, it will dry clear. So don't worry about the color because eventually after it dries, it'll look like nothing's on it. Now there might be a few bubbles in your label after you've added the Mod Podge. Don't worry about it. As it dries, the bubbles will dissipate a little bit. And there were a few that were left over on my particular label. However, I didn't really mind it because I thought it added to the rustic charm of my French country label. Now I let my label dry overnight on my box before I handled it. And then it was time to add my floral foam to the inside of my box. Now I got some floral foam and I put it inside and I added enough so that it would be even with the top of the storage box. And then after the foam was inside, I got some moss. I added a light layer of moss to the top and I tacked it all down with some floral pins. Now that my container is prepped and ready, I'm going to add my flowers. I cut my hydrangea stems into four different sizes. I have an eight inch, a 10 inch, a 12 inch, and a 14 inch long stem. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and mimic this as best as I can to have it look like the inspiration piece. So I'm gonna put two in the front and two along the side. That way it kind of forms a dome shape, which is really similar to our inspiration piece. Well, here is our final arrangement, and I think it turned out so similar to our inspiration piece. The container is almost identical. The size of the width and the height of our arrangement is the same. The flowers are almost identical as well, and it was so much cheaper. We made this for $20, which in my opinion is a bargain. You can switch this out too if you want some different colored hydrangeas or some different type of flowers. You can really personalize this to fit your own style and taste.
The first arrangement that I'm going to be doing is kind of a non-traditional arrangement. We're going to be using white roses and succulents. Now when I think about succulents, I don't typically think about Valentine's Day, which makes this arrangement a little more updated and modern. The first thing that I'm going to do is get a container. Now I have this heart container, it's ceramic, and it's not going to cost me anything obviously because I already own it. If you want something that's similar to this, I saw some at the Dollar Tree. They were plastic. They were the same size and shape, so they would be a great substitute. Also, if you want another kind of a substitute, you can just get a chocolate box. Just empty out the chocolates. That wouldn't be a hard thing to do, right? Everybody loves chocolates. And then you're left with an empty container that would be a great substitute. Inside my container, I cut some floral foam to fit. I just got a knife and I cut it into the shape of the heart and I put it inside and then I got some floral pins and I secured the pieces together. Next, I'm gonna add a light layer of moss to the top and then I'm gonna tack it in place with a few more of those floral pins. The moss will cover up the foam so when you've got your flowers, when you're putting your flowers in, if there's any gaps, it will cover up the foam and you won't be able to see it from the top. Next, I'm going to place in my succulents. I'm just going to take the top of the succulent and wiggle it out of the pot and it will come right out. And you're left with about a two inch stem, which is the perfect length to put right inside of my container. Now, after I put in my succulents in, I'm just going to put them in a random spots. I don't really want to put them in a line. I just kind of want to put them in organically. After that, I'm going to cut my stems of the white roses. I'll cut those really short, so they're about a two inch long piece, which is long enough to stick them inside of my arrangement without having them stick up too high. Now, again, I'm going to just be putting them in random areas throughout my container. That way it has a great flow to it and it doesn't look too arranged. And that was it for this arrangement. Wasn't that so easy? One thing that I really love about this arrangement is the monochromatic feel that it has with the white roses and the white container. That way it can fit in really nicely with your existing decor. I think that it still exudes Valentine's with a subdued and classy feel. My second flower arrangement is a classic Valentine's flower arrangement with red roses. Now I used a glass Dollar Tree container and I filled the entire thing up with floral foam. The reason why I did this is because I have just done the top before and as I put in the roses or the flowers or whatever arrangement that I'm doing, the foam gets pushed down and then you have to pull everything out and it's such a headache and you have to start over again. So we're just going to start by filling the entire thing up with foam. Now, after it's filled with foam, I'm going to take some ribbons, some red ribbons. I'm going to wrap it around the container because I don't want to see the foam and the red really just ties in the red roses. I'll get some hot glue and I will glue the ribbon directly to the vase and I will wrap it around and then I will hot glue the ribbon to itself again. To break up all of this red ribbon, I decided to add some wooden hearts to the center. I got these wooden stickers at the Dollar Tree and I just peeled off the back sticker off of it. I added the large white one first. I just put a little dab of hot glue on the back of it and placed it right in the center of my vase. And then I got a smaller red sparkly heart and I did the exact same thing. I got some hot glue hot glued a little bit onto it and stuck it into the center of the larger heart. Now that my container is prepped with foam and has the beautiful ribbons and hearts on it, it's ready for the flowers. Again, these roses are from the Dollar Tree and I got some wire cutters and I cut the stems off of the bouquet. I left the stems really long because I could push them in as far as I wanted to, so it's better to have too much stem than not enough. I just put this, the flowers in, the roses in my container, just randomly. I first started with my taller ones, so I put about five to six around the perimeter and at the top 
just to kind of give me a basic shape. And then I went back and I filled it in with the other red roses. Once I had all of my roses in kind of a cone shape, I had a few gaps, and so I wanted to fill those in. I first started with some blooming branches. Again, they were from the Dollar Tree, and the white little blooms on it added a nice contrast in color and texture, and then I added some red berries. Now, these red berries were actually from the winter selection of the Dollar Tree florals, and so they are going to cross we're gonna cross utilize them today, that's what we're gonna do. And they're going to be in our beautiful Valentine's flower arrangement, which will again add a nice bit of texture and contrast to our arrangement. And that was it for this flower arrangement, another super easy DIY Valentine floral arrangement. These are going to be perfect to give to loved ones or friends as gifts. I know I would love to get one of these for Valentine's. I hope you got some ideas or some inspiration so that you feel like you can make your own flower arrangement for Valentine's. Let me show you how to create a simple and easy fall floral arrangement made with inexpensive Dollar Tree items that will create a cozy, welcoming harvest feel on a budget. You don't have to spend a lot of money to get a beautiful piece of home decor. The Dollar Tree has so many wonderful items. The items that I got there for my arrangement are the leaf garlands. I got some floral picks with wheat and feathers in it. I got some raffia, some wire, I also got this beautiful braided wreath along with some ribbon. This ribbon is an eggplant colored with a gold chevron design and a coordinating flannel ribbon. Just know that you don't have to break the bank. You can find some wonderful things and these will be perfect for my floral arrangement. We're going to start off by decorating our wreath. Now this is going to go at the base of my bird cage. And what we're going to do is we're going to put some ribbons on first and then we'll fill in any gaps with our florals and our leaves. I'm gonna start off by taking all three of my ribbons and I'm gonna place them together and then I just have a, a piece of floral wire and I'm gonna tie it tightly together and when it's all snug and twisted together, I'm going to attach it to my wreath. I'll twist it on there and then it will stay securely in place. I poked the wires through the natural gaps in the wreath and then twisted the wires tightly together so the ribbon was securely attached to the wreath. Now that my ribbons are attached to my wreath, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap them around the wreath. I'm going to have the flannel one go this way and then I'm going to have the copper ribbon go in the alternating direction. That way everything gets covered up, there's no blank spaces. And also by doing it in alternating directions, it makes your ribbons uh, a little more billowy and full. Now I did cut my wire so it was a little longer in the back. That way when I'm done wrapping around my ribbons like I am, I can again secure it to the wreath with this leftover excess wire. Next, I'm gonna wrap around this leaf garland. It's so convenient because it has this little hole at the top, so I can wrap some of this wire through the center of the hole and easily attach it to the wreath. Attach a four inch piece of wire to the garland and then thread the wire through the small spaces in the wreath. Then, twist the wires together to securely attach the garland to the wreath. Next, wrap the leaf garland loosely around the entire perimeter of the wreath. Again, because I cut the pieces a little bit longer on the wire, I can just slide in the other half of that loop and twist it together and it will stay securely on my wreath. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna separate my stems and I'm gonna use my wire cutters to clip them off and then I will set them inside of my wreath and because there are holes in the braided wreath, it'll easily slide in and it will stay secure. I poked my fall florals in the wreath in the areas that didn't have ribbons or leaves. That way each part of my wreath form was covered in florals. This makes it feel bountiful and lush. 
I have these flicker flame candles that I'm gonna add inside of my bird cage. Now these are on a timer and they have a remote, so I won't have to worry about turning them on every single night. And also, I'm gonna put them in right now because I don't want to put my florals on the top and then open up this thing and possibly have them fall off. So they're going in right now. To make sure that my florals are secured to my bird cage, I'm gonna use floral foam. So I'm just gonna press it right on top because it has a natural little spot at the top that I can poke it onto. So I'm gonna press it on tight. That thing's not going anywhere, but just to make sure, I also have this wire and I'm gonna wrap it around there to make sure it's super, super secure. The next thing that we're gonna do is make some bows. Now, they're really super easy to make. Just take your ribbon, make it a loop, twist the ribbon, and then make another loop. Now you're gonna to continue to do that until you get the size of bow you want. I'll probably do like three loops. And then what I'll do is I'll wrap it together with some floral wire. And then I'm gonna to continue to do the same thing with the copper ribbon, and then also with the eggplant ribbon. And then I will put them all together. Loop your ribbons into the size that best fits your arrangement. I ended up doing four loops per ribbon. Once finished, I took a six inch piece of wire and wrapped it around the ribbon and twisted the wire together to secure. Then I fanned out my loops so they were full and round. I repeated the process with the eggplant and gold chevron ribbon. Once my bows were made, I placed them together, wrapped the wires around each bow, and then twisted the wires together to create one large bow. And finally, I took the smaller chevron bow wrapped the wires around the larger bow and twisted it all together. Then I placed the bow in the middle of the floral foam and attached it with floral pins. I'm gonna use a little chalkboard sign to put in the center of my arrangement. I love using chalkboard signs because you can write any message on it that will fit any theme or season. All I did was I just put some ribbon on the back and I hot glued it and that way it will be easy to attach this to my floral foam. Now that my ribbons and my sign are finished, I'm gonna add the leaves and the florals. What I'm gonna do is just place them in there and I'm gonna use my floral picks to hold them in place so they're nice and secure. Floral pins are a great way to make sure that your stems stay in place. If you don't have floral pins, you can just get some wire and bend it into a shape of a U or a V, or you can use hot glue, put it on the stem before you put it into your floral foam and that will hold it in place as well. I poked my stems into the foam and placed a floral pin on top of the stems so they were secured to the foam. This way, the stems aren't going anywhere. Finally, I placed the bird cage lantern inside of my wreath to complete the fall floral arrangement. Switch up and refresh the decor in your home this autumn season with a beautiful fall floral arrangement. You can easily transform the feel of your home by simply adding affordable florals throughout your space to add a distinctive cozy harvest charm. The shell vase that I got was from Beals and it was on clearance for $3.74 which is a great way to start off a project. I love a bargain. Inside of the opening of the vase shell, I'm going to place in some floral foam. Just gonna wedge it right in there so it's really tight and secure. To the top of the foam, I'm going to add some reindeer moss. I like to use moss over the foam because if you do see through the succulents or whatever flower you happen to be working with, I personally like to look at moss as opposed to the foam. So I am going to be putting reindeer moss over the top and I'm going to be securing the moss to the foam using floral pins. The succulents that I'm using for this arrangement are from the Dollar Tree. They had such a nice variety of sizes and shaped ones there and you can't go wrong with spending a dollar per succulent. So I started with the longest stemmed succulent first. I placed that at the top and then with these other smaller ones, they came in a pot. And so what I did to get those out was I just kind of wiggled them a little bit and they just popped right out. And they had a bit of a stem and so I just placed that stem right inside of the floral foam. And then I placed the smaller succulents running down the shell container. I used a total of four succulents, which was the perfect amount. This way, each succulent was close enough to each other but didn't overlap. 
and you could see each individual succulent. For a few dollars, I got this beautiful arrangement, this shell and all the succulents inside, and I think it was a great bargain. I'm going to add these eggs to this glass vase. I alternated between gold and blue eggs and filled the vase to the very top. After I place my speckled eggs and my gold eggs into the bottom of my vase, I'm going to add in some dogwood branches that I got at the Dollar Tree and some little willow branches that I got at Michael's. <music> 